Want to know what successful people are doing with their money to create wealth and use it consciously for the greater good? Welcome back to Wealth Unplugged, the weekly podcast that gives you diamond tips on creating conscious wealth from change makers, world shakers, and wealth creators. Now here's your host, Barbara Turley. Hi there, and welcome back to Wealth Unplugged for another week. You're very welcome to this, the show where I give you my key takeouts from the guests that I've been interviewing on my Feminine Wealth TV show, which is basically a show where I get the diamond tips on creating truly conscious wealth from entrepreneurs, investors, and philanthropists out there. So it's a really interesting show, and we get some amazing, amazing women on this show that give us the how-to. So every week in this podcast, I try and give you, you know, my key takeouts from the show and the things that you can implement straight away to try and increase your, you know, wealth, your success, um, and your general well-being in life. So we've had a bit of a break for a few weeks, actually, because I was away and then we had a couple of issues with scheduling the show. So it's great to be back on the podcast and giving you some good tips this week again. So this week on the show, I had a very interesting one, actually. I had a sexologist on the show. And you're probably wondering, you know, why would I get a sexologist on the show? Well, the reason being is because I've been looking at this whole money, sex, power kind of connection over the last few months. And I met an energy healer a few months ago who told me that the second chakra or the root chakra is where money, sex and power kind of come together in that particular area of the body. So I thought, wow, what an interesting topic. And, you know, I really wanted to delve into it further. So I found an amazing woman called Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Now, Dr. Nikki Goldstein, she is obviously a, she's a sexologist she's an expert in the whole sex and relationships area but she came up through this by first of all becoming a counselor and then she moved into mediation when couples are going through divorce and then that sort of fueled her interest even more to sort of say well how about I try and get to people before they get to that point where they're actually getting divorced because it's quite I guess quite a negative space to be in when you're doing mediation in that area so it pushed her to go to San Francisco and she found this this course and she did a doctorate in um, sexuality, human sexuality. So very, very interesting woman to talk to and just inspiring on this whole area. And we got into this whole jam session around money and sex and power and it was fa- fascinating talk. But to get on to my key takeouts from Nikki, you know, one thing she said in the beginning of the interview was, you know, we all suffer in society, unfortunately, from what she calls the should be curse. And we're all trying to fit into a mold that potentially wasn't meant for us. And she sees this with people with sexuality where, you know, we're all trying to figure out what is normal. What's the norm? We all want to know, like, you know, who's having sex five times a week or five orgasms a night? Or, you know, is that right for us? And maybe we should sort of stop and think about what we really want and what we really want as human beings away from everything else, away from religion, from society, from the should be thing, what we should be doing. And I see this a lot with money as well, because we all, everyone's chasing the millionaire status. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. Everybody feels like they should be successful. They should have the big, amazing career. But sometimes what we should have and what we actually want can be polar opposites and can be very, very far away from each other. And, you know, I actually experienced this in my own career before where in my previous, my last job, I mean, it was an interesting one because I was also a shareholder in the business, you know, but I was an employee as well. And I came to the point where I sort of accepted that, you know, I wanted to launch my own business. And that business today is called Energize Wealth. And when I went to tell, you know, my peers and my colleagues that I was going to leave and set up my own business, the resounding response I got was, but you're so good at it. You're so good at your job. Why would you leave? And what was amazing for me was I thought, well, if I'm that good at something that I'm not that passionate about, how good would I be at something that I actually am passionate about? And just because I'm good at something doesn't mean that I should continue doing it. So I guess that's my thing for today. I want you to say to yourself, just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's what you should be doing. And it doesn't mean that you can't dream to do something else. Because if you do something you're more passionate about, you will actually excel at that. So, 
you know, for me, and I guess Nikki sees the same things, she she saw, saw people who ended up, you know, marrying someone they thought they should be with or living a life they thought they should be having based on their upbringing. And then they end up locked up in this kind of unhappy, unfulfilled state and they end up in divorce. The cracks start to appear in relationships, in their finances, in their health, in everywhere. So this should be curse that we're all suffering in society. We should be getting rid of this curse because it's it's actually destroying this human potential that we have to reach the heights that we all know that we can. So stop shooting all over the place and start dreaming really, really big about what you really, really want and not what you should want. So um, then we got onto this, we started talking about, you know, Nikki's job and, and she actually appears quite a lot on, on um, the media. She's on television here in Australia. She's been in multiple magazines. She's all over the place and she's been great with the PR thing. And I said to her, you know, how do you um, get your message out in the most fulfilling way? And, you know, what she said she sort of suffers from sometimes is the magazines and stuff, they always want to have the articles like, you know, the 10 tips to have the most mind-blowing sex or, you know, how to give the most amazing blowjob and stuff like this. And, you know, I asked her whether this is getting away from the core of what she really wants to her message to be. And we got onto this topic, and I think I've mentioned this before, is this whole thing of sell them what they want, then give them what they need. And I've said this before, because sometimes you have to package things in a way that sells and you have to position stuff so that you get people in the door. And then once you have them in the door, then you can actually start to give them what they actually need. Now, a lady called Marie Forleo did this extremely well in the US where she had a book. The book was called Make Every Man Want You. And that book became a New York Times bestselling book. But the interesting thing about the book was once you got inside the book, it was actually a personal development book on improving yourself and not anything about men or you know, really, you know, the dating scene or anything like that. It was about being the best version of yourself. But the reason people bought the book was because the title was very catchy. So we were talking about this whole thing where I said it's a bit like parents trying to get veggies into their kids. You know, you kind of have to, you kind of have to get the broccoli dipped into chocolate before your children are going to eat it. So sometimes in our businesses, I really want you to think about this in our businesses or with anything to do with persuasion. You you need to think about. Not what you know that person needs, your customer, even your kids or your spouse. You've actually got to sell them something that they want. And then after that, you can plant in there what they need in order to get the result that they want. And Nikki does this extremely well, where she's got all the fizzy topics about sex and the cool kind of funky stuff. But then, you know, she actually, when she gets serious, all of a sudden and starts talking about the real issues, she is a wealth of knowledge on this whole area of human relationships and human sexuality and how, you know, it affects us. It affects our health. It affects our lives, our children. And I definitely took a few key things away from that and thought, you know, with this money thing as well, I've got to think about, you know, I know that in order to be to, to achieve some of the things we want in life, we have to get money working for us. But often as women in particular, we, we shy away from this discussion about money because we feel conflicted in our values or we feel like money is somehow in conflict with our deepest soul calling. So I guess for me, I've got to sell to you ladies out there listening. I've got to sell you this concept that in order to create the freedom that you want, in order to give back to society the way you want to, in order to actually live those values and that soul calling, you need to get money working for you. So I need to talk about all those other things first. So sell them what they want and then give them what they need. Key tip number two. So then my third key takeout, I guess, from Nikki, and it was an interesting one. We finally got into this whole topic, which was the area I really wanted to touch on, which was the connection between money, sex and power. And I actually didn't know how this was going to go. So it was it was a sort of a I didn't know whether it was going to be a flailing round in the dark type conversation or, you know, a really concrete um, discussion. And it turned out to be quite a concrete discussion. And Nikki had some really strong um, thoughts and ideas on this, which I agreed with. She said, basically, I guess over generations and over the, you know, the life of humans or whatever as women, society has sort of taken a stance with women. Now, this is a gross generalization. It's probably, you know, more a 50s style take. But by not educating women on money or sex, we actually take away their power or our power, I should say. I mean, I'm a woman too. 
And if you think about that for a second, you know, as a woman, you know, when we were originally years and years of generations back when sex was kind of a male thing and women were just there to sort of procreate and sex was just purely to procreate, it sort of protected the family. It stopped women from leaving. And if women were not sexually um, matured or developed, then they would sort of never want for anything more and that would keep the family stable. Similarly with money, and this is kind of a, a problem today where a lot of women are financially disempowered because they don't control their own money or they don't control the money of the family. And sometimes women end up in toxic relationships or very bad situations because they, and they can't leave because they are disempowered financially. So this whole area of money, sex and power, you know, it is a fascinating topic and I want you to really think about, you know, are you getting your power taken away financially? It might not be in your own, you know, relationship. It might just be in your upbringing. It could be in how you're thinking about money. You might be taking your own power away by actually giving it away and abdicating your responsibility for your own financial life. And where we see this happen a lot is particularly in divorce situations or situations where this where your spouse has died so the male the male partner um, has passed away and women are left with often large amounts of money and big financial decisions to make and what ends up happening is you know they go out looking for a trusted advisor someone who can help them because they don't have the power to do it themselves and they end up giving their power away sometimes to sharks and salesmen who you know talk a great game but they're really not the people that you should be going to and the stats are quite high on the number of women who end up you know losing a lot of money after the death of a spouse or a divorce because they end up giving their power away to someone that they trusted and they didn't understand what they were doing. So I guess my whole philosophy is to try to empower women to be able to lead their own wealth, to be able to not necessarily not need advisors because I'm always an advocate of trusted advisors, but knowing enough so that you're empowered to ask the right questions, to have those advisors on your team, but you're leading that team and not the other way around. So I'd urge you to really think about this. And as women, I think we need to not step into the more masculine realms, but we need to sort of feminize these concepts of money, sex and power and realize that as women, we don't have to become men of women in order to embrace these areas and to develop this part of ourselves. We just need to understand that we can be feminine. We can remain in our feminine energy and still develop these areas that have traditionally been more masculine. So I'll leave you on that um, strong and interesting point, I think, for this week. And as always, if you find this show entertaining or you find it useful, I'd really love if you'd share it with some of your friends. And also, if you could leave a review, if you're on iTunes, you can leave a review and a rating. And that would help the show get out to way more people and would be really beneficial to me. So be sure to leave a review. Or if you have any comments, hop on over and join the conversation over on energizewealth.com where we can have a chat about this podcast and you can check out the full interview with Dr. Nikki Goldstein on the Feminine Wealth TV show. Okay, so I'll leave you there for this week. Um, I'll be back next week where I'm going to be taking my some really key tickets key takeouts actually from my guest this week, Cecilia Robinson, who is the group CEO of My Food Bag. And this woman is dynamite. She's 29 years old and she has she's already in the stratosphere. So you don't want to miss that one. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Come and join us on EnergizeWealth.com to continue the conversation. Get your free video training, Seven Steps to Energized Wealth, and watch the video interviews that